YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. This week we're gonna be talking about a new tool for converting your scans into positive images. I'm referring to a program called Film Lab Desktop. Originally, Film Lab started as an iOS app for your phone, but now it's a downloadable application that you can get whether you have a Windows PC or a Mac. I won't get too much into the backstory of how this kind of all came to be. You can check the link down below and it'll show you some information about the creator and kind of the backstory and just some more details about who these people are. But nonetheless, Film Lab now is available as an app that you can download and use on your computer as a standalone product. So of course, I was very curious to see how this compared to some of the other options that are already out there. So I went ahead and put three different images through this program and I'm gonna show you what I get here. After we go through the different examples, at the end I'll give you kind of my thoughts, look at some pros and cons, and just talk about how I see this fitting into my workflow and potentially other people's workflows. Let's go ahead and jump into the computer. All right, so I got a couple different files here that I wanna try out. So let's open up the first one. And I'm just gonna pick this one right here, which I believe is a landscape image. So you kind of open up the file there very simply and boom, instantly you have a conversion. No need to crop, no need to do anything. Um, it gives you an image right out of the bat. And this is just a scan that I took with my digital camera. So as basically as straightforward as it gets. So this image right off the bat here doesn't look like the accurate color that I wanna see. Definitely want a bit more brightness and I wanna bring out some more of the color here, especially in the greens. So I'm gonna start playing with this. And as you see on the right side here, there really aren't too many options. I think the overall logic here is that you mess around with your options here, kind of some basic options. And then you go ahead and throw this into Lightroom or into Photoshop and do some fine tweaks. Um, especially because out here when you look at output, you can output as a JPEG or as a high resolution TIFF. So doing that then gives you the ability to go into Lightroom or Photoshop and edit some more. So let's go ahead and actually fix this image. Um, right off the bat, I think I wanna add some additional warmth in here, just a bit. And maybe a little bit of magenta as well. Not too much, um, but just a bit to bring out the colors. And then I do wanna increase the exposure just a bit. And as you see here, as I decrease this slider, it gets brighter, and as I increase it, it gets darker. This is mimicking what happens in the dark room. So the longer your exposure time, the darker your image will be. And the shorter your exposure time, the brighter the image will be. So we'll do that. And of course you see here it's on auto right here. So leaving it on auto will basically adjust everything at once as you change the exposure time. If you don't like that, you can go ahead and take it off auto, which I actually am gonna do because I don't like that it's changing that for me. So I'm gonna remove auto here and I'm gonna remove auto here. So now everything should be alone as you see, yep. Um, so I'm gonna increase the exposure a bit by decreasing the time or decreasing the slider. And now that's very bright, but I think that that's okay. I'm gonna increase the contrast, and this is probably the way to increase the saturation because there is no explicit saturation slider. So I kinda of like where the contrast is right there. And now the image is looking a little bit too warm for me, so I'm gonna decrease um, the warmth here by moving this over to a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna get it to just where there's a hint of warmth. So I think somewhere right there looks pretty good. And then finally, I think I'm gonna remove just a bit of that magenta and inch on over to the green just a bit. And I kinda like where that is. Let me increase some more contrast here just to see if we can pull out some more of that green. And I think we've got a good conversion here. At least we've got a good base product here that I can then put into Lightroom or Photoshop to make some additional touches. But in terms of converting this and getting an output very quickly, this did that. It's actually very astonishing how fast this does it without you telling it anything ahead of time. All you do is select the file that you want to convert and it does everything else. It even kind of changes the border to black. In other programs such as Negative Lab Pro, you actually have to crop your image first to define what your image is as opposed to what the border is. Here, you don't have to do any of that. So, you know, it's a bit of a time saver there um, for that specific step. But in general, I really like how you can convert this very quickly. I'm not gonna put this into Photoshop or Lightroom because that's not the point of this tutorial here, but just gonna show you how this works. So this is our first image. Okay, so my next image is actually going to be not a landscape, more of like a street style image. And let me just open it up here. I believe it's this one, let's see.
Yep, that's the one. Okay, let's open that one. And it's doing its thing here. I would say this probably takes maybe five seconds maximum before it spits out an image. And already I can tell kind of what I want to change about this image, but in terms of the conversion, looks pretty good. The highlights look like where they're supposed to be. The shadows look like where they're supposed to be. You know, this isn't something you look at and you're like, wow, this is completely off. So immediately I want to go ahead and change the balance on here, the color balance. So actually I clicked on auto here and it just took care of it for me. Um, I'm going to click auto on everything else and see what happens. Uh, so I don't like that at all. The contrast kind of went crazy and so did the brightness, but that's all right. We can bring this down and we'll bring this down as well. So let's decrease the exposure slider here just to bring up the brightness a bit. And then of course we're going to have to add some contrast here to kind of bring everything back. And that's looking pretty good right there. I think I still want it to be just a bit brighter. So let me increase this brightness slider. And I think that's where I want it to be. It's a little bit blown out here, but I think that that makes sense given that that's the brightest part of the image. So finally, I think I want to make this a bit warmer. Just a hint. And it's looking a little bit green there. So I think we're gonna have to add more magenta. And that's looking a bit better. So keep adding some warmth here. And then we can add in some magenta just to balance it out. And I really like where this is at. This image has a pretty good bright exposure. You know, for my taste, I think I don't mind this brightness spot here. The color red on the car looks pretty good. It's very kind of cherry red. A little hint of magenta here in the shadows, but I think that that's normal. And then overall, I think the contrast is where it's, it's supposed to be. So in general, I really like where this is, and I think this is ready for output as well. So just to show you how we output here, um, we're going to leave this. Actually, we're going to change this to TIFF because let's say I wanted to change this in Photoshop. I want as much um, information as possible. And then you just click on this little arrow right here. So that's kind of a share button. And when you click on that, it starts to do work, kind of do the computations in the background. And then eventually we'll get a little dialog box here asking where to go. And actually this didn't ask me where I want to put the image. So I'm assuming it just puts it right back to with the same folder where the raw image is. So let's actually double check that. And I think that'll be correct here. Um, and yeah, there's the TIFF image. Let's just preview it and there you go. And this image size-wise is 78 megabytes, which is very, very large. So if you don't need a TIFF, just do a JPEG. But the good news is if you do do a TIFF, then you have a lot of information to work with. Okay, so let's do one more image here. I wanna show you one that actually has kind of a very different lighting scenario. So we're gonna pick an indoor one that was flash lit. This was from a couple years ago at a Halloween party. So let's just let this load really quickly and there you go. As you can see here when I, when I scan this with my digital camera, you know, there's other photos here on the edges. And I actually use a toilet roll that's kind of like a mask. That's these curved things you see here. So don't mind that. But the point is, again, this software just did everything automatically and didn't really need me to define where the actual photo is. And right off the bat, this image again looks very properly kind of converted into a positive color image. And honestly, I don't really know what I want to do here in terms of balance and, and color and that kind of thing, just because this is a very complex scene. It's indoors, it's very dark, it's flash lit. But in general, I think the white here looks white. And then the blue in the, in the contacts here also looks blue. So I'm not really offended by the warmth of the color of this image. So I honestly, I think I would just export this one as is. But as you can see, this program can handle kind of a variety of different scenarios. We did a landscape to start, then we did a street image. And now we have kind of a random candid from an interior lighting source. So um, very happy overall with how this program handles these conversions. And of course, there's minimal controls here, but this kind of just sets you up to then edit something further in Lightroom. All right, so I hope that that tutorial was a bit useful. It's not super in depth and I'm no master at this software, but I definitely was able to use it and get some good results out of it. So let's talk about the pros and cons. Starting with the pros. What I love is that this is a standalone product. You don't need a subscription to Lightroom or Photoshop or any of the Adobe products or literally any other program overall. You can just use this one as is and directly import and export your images through this software. In terms of cost, it is a pretty low upfront cost. This is a subscription model, so you're never gonna own this software, but you are gonna pay per month for the use. I believe the cost is $5.99 USD 
And like I said, you kind of just pay that to start and you don't need to kind of buy anything or pay some larger sum of money. In terms of functionality, I think this is where this software really shines. Right off the bat, it's just such an easy software to use. You literally go to file, you click open, import your particular image, and then within seconds you get an instant conversion. There's nothing else that you need to do beyond that. You don't have to crop, you don't have to define anything on the image. It just reads it and knows what to do with everything that it sees. Of course, there's gonna be opportunity to tweak the image because no computer is ever gonna read your mind and know exactly how you think the image should look. But the good news is that this program does have some key items that you can tweak on it. Interestingly enough, there's only a few options to tweak here and that's potentially one of the benefits of this software. It gives you just what you need, kind of the bare minimum, and it's very usable. Although there's only a couple sliders, those actually go a very long way and are very useful in determining how your image will look. There's a lot you can do with just a few options. On top of that, the UI is actually very nice looking. Um, compared to some of the other programs that look a bit kind of hacky and maybe a bit old school, this one is, is fairly sleek and of course it's very simple, but, but it just looks like you're using something modern, which I think matters a lot nowadays. All right, so in terms of cons, I think something that I just said actually could be a con as well. And that is the fact that this program is very, very easy and very simple. I know a lot of people out there really like having full control over their images and like to be able to tweak everything. And that's great, of course, but this program does not give you that. So if you really like to tinker and you like to look at every individual color channel and kind of just mess around as much as possible, this is not the program for you. This program does give you an output that then you can throw into Lightroom or Photoshop and tweak further if you'd like. As I mentioned earlier, this program does not require Lightroom or Photoshop, but Interestingly enough, this one actually benefits from having a subscription to Lightroom or Photoshop. Although it's not acquired, it's almost implied that you should take your images from here and throw them into Lightroom and Photoshop for some further editing. I think that's the method in which you'll get the best use out of this program because it'll give you the initial conversion and give you a really good set of kind of foundational elements. But of course, if you wanna tweak and really cement your image, doing so in Photoshop or in Lightroom, I think is the way to go. Finally, the subscription model itself, I think could also be a con. Of course, you don't have to pay a bunch of money up front to get in and get access, but you do have to keep paying in perpetuity. And of course, after a certain number of months, you're gonna be spending a lot more on this than you might spend on a one single time fee for something like Negative Lab Pro. It really depends on what you're interested in, but there's definitely a cost analysis to be done there over time. So overall, how do I feel about this product? Well, I'm actually very impressed. Um, I love how quick and how easy it is to use. And I'm really impressed by how much little work you need to do in order for it to then make decisions and give you a usable product. You don't really have to watch a YouTube guide on this. You don't have to look up information to use this program. It's very intuitive and it just kind of feels adequate, especially if you use the programs like Lightroom and Photoshop where you're used to seeing sliders and you're used to moving things around. The UI is very simple, as I said, and I think it's sleek and kind of nice looking, but it's not the most functional UI. For example, you have to click and drag sliders around. You can't input value or you can't just increase it by a certain steady number as much as you'd like. You know, there's all of these efficiencies that you're used to when you use other programs like Lightroom or Photoshop. So I'd love to see some of those efficiencies make their way into this software. But without those efficiencies just now, it is a bit tedious to use this program. Lastly, I'm just really happy that there's some competition out there. I'm a big fan of Negative Lab Pro and I've been using it basically for all of my images now for let's say almost a year. And I'm happy with how it works, but I'm very happy to see other options pop up there because it kind of pushes everyone to really start to work on their process and also improve on the software. So always down for some competition. And I'm happy to see that the competition that is popping up, or at least specifically this particular competition, is doing a pretty good job. So what do you think about the software? Do you think you'll be using this? Let me know in the comments what your plans are with this program. All right, y'all, that's what I got for you this week. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely go ahead and subscribe. Until the next video, y'all. Peace.